Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be going over my 778th Tank Battalion impression. Um, going over this impression, I'm going to give you a little bit of brief history about it. Um, starting off, I chose this impression because it was closely related with the division I uh, reenacted with the 26th Infantry Division. Um, this Tank Battalion in, division, in particular was with the 26th um, all the way from January 45, so right around the end of the Battle of the Bulge. Um, all the way to July 1945. So this tank battalion was very cr closely cr uh, correlated with the 26th. So that is the reason why I chose this. So uh, basically I'm just gonna go over everything in this as well as do um, what it looks like on me. So yeah, I'll also I'll show some reference photos as well as some things that I'm missing in this, in this impression. So that's the, gonna be this video. All right, starting off right up here with the helmet. This is the M1938 tanker helmet. Um, this is a reproduction off of at the front. So, all right, try to do this with one hand, just like that at the front. Very good reproduction so far. Um, on the helmet is original Polaroid 1021 goggles. Um, these just connect, sorry, connect around the back, just like that. And then on here are, and connected with these wires throughout each side is your HS38 headset which are with R14 receivers. This is a later war headset. Um, early war was an HS18 with a black plug, a PL54 plug. This one is a PL354. This, this means it's a later war one, I think 1943 and on. Tankers use this type. Uh, basically, so this headset, the, the, the HS38, would connect to this extension cord, the full name for this extension cord is the CD, sorry, CD307-A, um, which would, that plug will connect via this insert right here, and this extension cord would then connect to the PL, this PL55 um, end would connect to your BC606 radio set inside the tank, which would basically, so you could hear what other members of the tank and other people in the tank are saying. Uh, because inside the tank, it's extremely loud and um, you cannot hear what people are saying. So you need ra a radio, you need a microphone and a headset. So that would connect to a headset inside the tank. Um, also, as just what I just said, this is your throat microphone. The full name would, is right here, is the T, sorry, T30-S. So this will go around your neck. Uh, these two will pick up what you're listening, pick up what you're saying. This will then connect to a, device called the SW141-V. I'll post a picture of that right now. So if you can see in that, in that picture right there, um, basically these two ends connect to, to the SW141-V, which the N4, M, sorry, it's, it's hard to fully say, but it's basically a push to talk um, microphone piece. So when you push it, uh, other members inside the tank could hear what you're saying and that would connect to this which would also connect to your bc606 uh radio set as well as this would so i know it's kind of a handful to fully say if you want me to make another video i'm going over how exactly these work i know it's somewhat confusing but they all connect to one bc606 which so guys inside the tank could hear what you're saying as well as you could hear what they're saying so it's basically a full radio so you can hear what each other are saying. Like, cause as I said before, inside the tank is extremely loud. All right, moving on from that. Um, I'm now gonna go over, starting just going down. Another thing that you'd be wearing on your head um, for this impression. Oh, I'll say before, this impression is more of a winter to early spring. So it's still mostly cold. So this is mostly cold weather gear still. So guys are still be wearing heavy jackets, wools, things like that. They would not switch. Um, later in, in spring, Late spring and it's summer, it's starting to get warmer again. Guys will be wearing full HPT coveralls and switch out of things I'm gonna explain uh, soon. But, um, so yeah, that's that. But another thing that some guys will be wearing on their head is a tanker hood, which I will sh show a picture right now. So that hood, basically just a wool, wool hood, uh, basically just keeps your head warm. Uh, protects from rain and wind goes you, you fit, fits perfectly underneath the helmet so that's basically the deal with that pretty straightforward um all right so i'm just gonna move right on down these are just straight standard straightforward m1937 wool pants uh every guy would, would be wearing these tankers infantrymen 
Signal Core guys, those are not really matter. These are standard issue M1937. These are original, as well as an original belt. Um, so yeah, moving right on down. I might go a little bit out of order. I'm gonna go down this way and then back through. This is the tanker jacket. This is a repro because originals are basically impossible to find. This is an at the front reproduction. Um, fleece lined. These are amazing jackets. Highly recommend to get pick up a pair of these because. They're super nice for reenactments. They keep you really warm. So definitely a plus. Tankers will be wearing these all the time. And this right here, if you can tell, is a blank uh, armored division patch, which, which most guys of the 778th Tank Battalion would be wearing. Uh, they would most likely not. Some guys would write 778 right here, but most of the pictures I've, I've seen, I'll pull up, pull up some re reference photos at the end of this. Um, it would just be a blank patch. So that's how that would work. <clears throat> Moving down. Right here, pretty straightforward. This is a pistol belt. Guys would be carrying these just to carry. Canteen, first aid. If guys, if guys did have a pistol, which a lot of guys also did, uh, people would hold the, uh, magazines, uh, ammo pouches here on the belt. Pretty straightforward, just to hold your basic needs while inside the tank. Um, this impression, this guy, for me, I do not have a pistol mainly because I don't have one currently. Um, but guys would typically have a shoulder holster or a holster that would connect to this. And typically it would be a 1911 or M1917 revolver. Either or, guys would be carrying. Very, very common. So, yeah. Moving down. This would be going over your wool pants or wool trousers. This are These are wool overalls specifically made for the tankers. Um, also, as stated in my previous impression video, the 26th ID, a lot of infantrymen would also be wearing these too. These are great pieces. Keep you very insulated and warm. It's a zip down um overalls with wool lines so it keeps you really warm highly recommend to wear these in, um for reenactments very very helpful they keep you really warm so that's why tankers would get them they were issued spe specifically to tankers but a lot of infantrymen would also wear them too so yeah that was also very common <clears throat> moving on moving up right over here are pretty straightforward the five button sweater um it's just a knit sweater infantrymen tankers would have these all the time very common, so pretty sure that one's from at the front. Um, so yeah, there's that. Then another standard issued piece that tankers, infantrymen, etc., would all have a wool shirt. This is an 1937 wool shirt, just like that. Um, pretty sticks, pretty straightforward. Here is some pocket litter. I'll quickly go over everything in this, so it'll be relatively a short, a faster video than my last full impression video. Um, this, as I said before, handkerchief. This would all go in your pockets pocket knife this is an original 1930s cigarette lighter apparently th th there's no uh letter fluid in, in there uh lucky strike cigarettes <clears throat> this is one thing that every tanker would be carrying this was mildly different from the infantryman every tanker would have uh a vehicle operator's permit uh because because part of their job was to operate a vehicle so you would be you would have to check off the tank right there if you'd see that tank heavy or light or medium for me i haven't written that down yet but this is a need for um paperwork for a tanker guys would definitely be carrying those um other common things just in waldorf toilet paper that those would be issued in carry rations uh cigarette tin or cigarette holder this holds your polaroid goggles which are right on the helmet right there uh, inside these are more lenses um tracer lenses things like that I think, I think three or four more lenses inside there the regular clear ones just on the I was on the helmet right now um, pretty straightforward wallet. This has your ID, photos, currency. Pretty straightforward. I went over that in a, in a past video. This right here is a little bit different. I will briefly explain this. This is actually a German Gürfel, which is um, basically a spoon and fork. And you basically fold them and you put them back together like just like this. Here, sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. Like that. Um, these were made for the German army. This is actually original. This one's dated 1940, if you can see that right there. Um, basically, a lot of GIs would take these because they were so much better than American uh, utensils, and they were just more compact. So a lot of guys would tank them, including tankers, would have these all the time. Very common for GIs to have, but that is German. Um, comb, standard um, flashlight, TL122-A flashlight. Um, dog tags, the P38 can opener. Right here, uh, some standard, just... Leather palm gloves, these are actually original leather palms. Um, 
They're a little bit beat, but not too, too bad. So yeah, leather palms. Um, guys would either be having these or just the full leather airborne gloves. Those are, those are also known as airborne gloves, full leather ones. But um, both would work. But tankers would typically always be wearing gloves because first of all, they're dealing with cold metal machinery as well as um, just when they're grappling onto metal inside the tank. Good to have gloves. So very common for tankers to be wearing gloves. So there's that. <clears throat> Moving up. Uh, that is a tank top. That's undergarments for a tanker as well as regular infantrymen would have that too. Tank top, boxers. Pretty simple. These would be worn underneath your pants. Pretty straightforward. Right here is just a scarf. I should that in past few. That's just a civilian scarf. A lot of GIs would carry scarves or wear scarves like this just to keep warm. Pretty straightforward. These are double buckle boots. Um, I got these off of SMW Wholesale. I've had these for like three years now. They are pretty worn, if you can tell, but they still work very well. Highly recommend. Tankers would have, be wearing these very common. Typically, later war, tankers would be wearing double buckles or shoe packs. Um, those are the two most common things. And then just some uh, original wool socks. Pretty straightforward. So, I mean, already, that's I've gone over everything in this impression. It's a lot smaller um, compared to an infantryman because they wouldn't have to carry everything on their person. This is a, just, just a person, like what the guys would have on their person for a tanker because they can carry other personal effects on the tank because keep in mind, they're in a moving vehicle. They li they literally, yeah, they can move with their items on a tank. So yeah, all those things on their person. But yeah, I stayed before. The only two items I'm really missing is the tanker hood and the SW141-V, which would connect to the mi throat microphone right there. But um. Yeah, I know all the wiring pieces is a little bit complicated, especially for the, when you get to the tanker helmet, but guys would have to get used to it and carry it. So yeah, pretty straightforward. Nothing very uh, intricate or detailed. It's basically a more basic, simpler version of an infantryman. Less pieces, only thing that, that really change is some of the uniforms and definitely the helmet as well as some um, the radio operation gear. So yeah, uh, I'll put up some reference reference photos right now. And then I'm also going to show me out in the field wearing all this gear and what it looked like as a, with a full walk around. So, yeah. Hey guys, all right, now this is a full view around of my impression on me. So I'm just kneeling down so you can see a little bit closer. So here's the extension cord, connected to the HS38, just like that, it'll connect to it. Right now I just have it slinged around inside this, which when I'm inside the tank, I would, un I would unsling it and put it inside the BC606. Um, I'm also wearing a throat microphone, if you can tell. It would go right around where your, um, uh, where well, your larynx is right here. Let's rest it there. It's pretty uncomfortable. This is like the most annoying part of the tanker impression. And then this wire would then connect to the SW141-V, uh, which I don't have. That would also be slinged around your neck. And then you would click it, and then that it also would connect inside the um, um, inside the BC-606 inside the tank. So, yeah, that's just a little look around. Um, I'll stand up so you can see the full thing. All right. So that's it. Uh, yeah, that's just about the full impression. I got the flash right here. All the pocket litter. All sorts of my pocket. Also, I have no gloves right now, but I have gloves right here. A lot of guys would just stuff it inside their cover or overalls. So here's just a view around. Yep. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm wearing, if you can see, bell buckles. I would um, tighten them around my overalls. Uh, if you want to take off the helmet, I mean, you'll down, you would unplug your section cord, and it comes off. And there you go. That's the helmet. Put it back on. Just like that. Put the flaps over here. Extension cord. Plug right back in. And... You're ready to go. And that's basically the extent of it. Um, not everyone would be carrying flashlights. Just some guys would have them when they're outside the tank. I have a scarf, throw a microphone. So, uh, yeah, that's the full 778 tank impression. I say this is the uh, 
more winter to early spring, right around now, March, early March, February, to Battle of the Bulge. Um, so yeah, this is basically all winter uniforms. So yeah, that's uh, that's about it. If you have any questions about it, uh, any follow-up, any history about them you want to know about, um, especially with it being correlated with the 26th Infantry, just uh, feel free to let me know. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.